A few weeks ago, I reviewed the Arctic Freezer 33, an inexpensive tower-style cooler that yielded some impressive thermal management. Recently, Arctic released an aptly named eSports edition of the Freezer 33 to utilize their new Bionics F120 fans. Not only does this new cooler look significantly more premium than the existing model, but supposedly it performs better, comes with an additional PWM fan, and also comes boxed with a 10-year warranty. As great as I said the Freezer 33 budget cooler was, it definitely looks like a budget cooler. The silver fins and exposed copper heat pipes with generic looking fan wasn't really meant to impress anyone. It seems with the eSports edition they have definitely addressed this issue. It uses the same 49 fin tower design as the existing Freezer 33, but it's been painted black, including the heat pipes. New fans are black as well, with black blades, and you have a choice of four different accent colors for the fans. Red, green, yellow, and like this one, white. A simplified logo also adds to the overall subtlety of the cooler. But it doesn't stop with just the appearance of the cooler. The extra cost associated with the eSports Edition also has a few added features. It has two Bionics PWM fans with an included adapter, so fans can share a single CPU fan header. Rubber padding on these fans also helps to decrease vibration noise. Each of these fans retails for $15, which means the fans make up the majority of the value of the cooler. A lot of cooler manufacturers out there have dropped the ball when it comes to shipping their coolers with compatibility for AMD's new AM4 processors. That's not the case with Arctic. Almost all of their coolers that I'm aware of come shipped with the ability to be used with AMD's new AMD4 processors. Not only the eSports edition, but also the older Freezer 33 is also completely 100% compatible. And we will be performing a Ryzen build using this exact cooler in the coming weeks. But now let's talk about that 10-year warranty, a warranty that lasts a decade. That is unheard of when it comes to components with moving parts. There's a lot that can go wrong over the next 10 years, and that speaks volumes of how confident Arctic is that this cooler will continue to perform for many years to come. To put that in perspective, if the cooler existed, you could have bought it when George Bush was still president, and it would still be under warranty now. But let's talk about the most important part of this video, which is, of course, the performance. How does this cooler perform? To measure this, I went back to the machine that we used to do the review of the original Freezer 33. Essentially, we took an old Dell XPS system, an off-the-shelf Dell computer, and did a case swap, added an SSD and a graphics card, and then replaced the stock Intel cooler with a Freezer 33. Basically, pulled, we took a bunch of measurements on the temperatures, and then for this review, I pulled that cooler out and put in the eSports edition, so it's an exact apples-to-apples -apples comparison. The processor in that build is a non-overclockable i7-4770. At idle, the cooler sat at a respectable 37 degrees Celsius, which was only a delta of 9 degrees over the ambient temperature. At load, the cooler managed to keep the processor at 75 degrees, which is only 47 degrees warmer than the surrounding temperatures. So after looking at the data, I realized there wasn't much of a performance difference between the two, and I realized that I may need to uh, use the new eSports edition in a situation that maybe stresses the cooler. To that end, I took the cooler out and put it in a different machine. It's actually the Hackintosh that my wife and, my wife and I built, and you can check that video out uh, up in the cards. And in that machine, we're rocking an i7-6700K that's running at 4.5 gigahertz. So of course, it's unlocked, so we're able to overclock it to that frequency and it, it runs you know a little bit toasty being overclocked and of course upping the voltage accordingly and for that reason we have a cryo rig r1 universal sitting on there which is one of the biggest if not the biggest air coolers out there on the overclock 6700k the freezer 33 esports sat at a chilly 32 degrees celsius which was only six degrees warmer than the surrounding temperatures at load, the cooler managed to keep the processor at 73, which was also only 47 degrees warmer than ambient temperatures. Again, part of this is, of course, that the cooler is doing its job and doing it well, but it also shows how much good airflow can impact the cooling of your components. That Inwin 301 sucks in air from the bottom and it goes right into the GPU. So your CPU is kind of getting that leftover hot air that kind of works its way around the GPU. So it can only really get so cold in that confined space. 
whereas the uh, Enthu Evolve Micro ATX case that we used has a giant 200 millimeter fan in the front that pushes a lot of air over the cooler and it pushes it right out the back. But how does that compare? Well, the eSports Edition performed 13% better than the standard Freezer 33. However, the Cryorig R1 performed 7% better than the eSports Edition, which we kind of expected to see. They fall in line with their associated costs, with the Freezer 33 non-eSports Edition on one end and the massive Cryorig R1 on the other. They perform pretty much where you'd expect them to, at least in the right order. However, we notice that the eSports Edition performs closer to the Cryorig's performance than it does to the standard Freezer 33. The price, however, tells a different story. Again, they line up in the correct order with the Freezer 33 being the cheapest and the Cryorig R1 being the most expensive, but instead of being closer to the Cryorig R1 as it was in performance, it's actually closer to the stock Freezer 33 in price. The eSports Edition costs only 47% more than the Freezer 33, yet the Cryorig R1 costs 80% more than the eSports Edition, which is a massive price increase for only a 7% increase in performance. That being said, I guarantee you if we took both those coolers out and put them in an even more demanding system, something that was really going to produce a lot of heat, we would see, I, I can only imagine we would see a bigger difference between those two. So far so good. I'm, I'm genuinely impressed with the cooler up until the point where I had to install it. First you had to remove the fans because you can't reach the screws that attach the mounts to the cooler with the fans on. That in and of itself isn't that big of a deal, but that means you also have to remove your graphics card out of the case. First of all, because it makes screwing the cooler to the motherboard easier, but also you can't really reach the lower clips to reattach the fans with the GPU still in place. Then you of course apply the included thermal paste, screw the cooler to the motherboard, reattach the fans, and replace the graphics card. So it's not as easy as it could be. Is it the end of the world? No. I mean, you don't replace your, your CPU cooler that often. I mean, you should replace it more often than say every 10 years, but Arctic doesn't seem to think so. The Arctic Freezer 33 eSports Edition offers a lot of thermal headroom for a cooler that costs less than $50. My recommendation, however, depends entirely on your thermal needs. If you're simply replacing an OEM, Intel, or AMD cooler that came with your processor, or you're not planning on doing a lot of overclocking, then the eSports Edition is definitely going to be a little bit of overkill, and you'd be better off saving some money and purchasing maybe just the standard Freezer 33 instead. Adversely, if you've got one of the new Intel i9 or AMD Threadripper high core count processors, and you're planning on pushing those to their absolute thermal limit, there's really only a handful of coolers, air coolers out there that would be up to the task. And the eSports Edition is not one of them. But for 90% of the people out there who have an Intel i5, i7, or AMD Ryzen 5, or even Ryzen 7, this would be genuinely a very good choice, especially if you're looking into overclocking. This will definitely be able to perform very well in that application. So all in all, it looks great, it performs well, and you could still potentially be using it under warranty when the iPhone 20 comes out in 2027. Well, thank you guys so much for watching and go ahead and give this video a like if you appreciated it, found it insightful or otherwise enjoyable, and go ahead and subscribe so you know when our future content drops. Uh, if you want to watch my original review of the Freezer 33, save yourself a little bit of money and get that one instead. That video can be found there as well as links to the products I mentioned in the video description. And also in the video description, you will find links to giveaways that we're almost always doing. Thanks again for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. 10 years ago, Halo 3 was just released. Michael Jackson was still alive. The iPhone was brand new. The original Transformers movie was still in theaters.